Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a um, video all about my communal setup and telling you everything that's in there and telling you um, all about the upgrade and everything that I've done recently. Um, if you want to check out the original video where I first ever spoke about my communals, um, it's up here in this card. Um, so you can go check that out first if you want um, and then I will show you the update on them now about everything that's in the tank. So back about four years ago I set up a communal tank. I had some hisses and I had some millipedes and I didn't really know what to do with them all um, and somebody suggested to me that um, they had their lamb snails and his and cockroaches together in a tank. They suggested that you could keep the non carnivorous animals together so that's what um, we've done. Um, I've had them for quite a while now and in this new setup they've been in there for a couple of months and it's going really well. Um, there's a couple of stick insects in there by the way that won't be staying in there but I will show you them, you them in the video. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, move them into our stick insect enclosure once it's finished. Um, Terry's actually building it for me and we've started it in the old house um, but then once we moved we lost like 90% of our stick insects so it was absolutely gutted. But I'm going to show you the setup now and show you what I've got in it. I also want to give a shout out to Scott Zinvitz who also did a communal tank setup very recently. Um, absolutely loved it. Um, he's got some really nice animals in there and the Magnifica cockroaches. Oh my god, they're stunning. I love them. If I could afford them, I would so have them in this enclosure. So anyway, I'm going to get on with it and show you the enclosure now. So here is the enclosure um, for my communal tank. Um, I will show you how I made this um, in another video coming up very soon. Um, so if you like it, just uh, don't forget to subscribe so you can see how it was done. Um, but as you can see, um, it's as naturalistic as I could possibly get it using fake plants. Um, except for the bramble, which is by there, but that's for one of the inhabitants of the enclosure. Um, I'm really proud of this enclosure. It's the um, centerpiece in my living room. Um, it's directly underneath my television and it has um, all LED lights um, above it so that there is a decent amount of light on groggy days. Other than that, the light shines in from the window by there and it comes in super, super bright and the sun beetles and everything live on uh, usually on this side and they do like to bask on this rock and within the uh, branches and stuff there. Um, and yeah, they're doing really well in there actually. One side, over this side here, um, is kept extremely um, humid. There is a lot of um, moisture in this side. There is also sphagnum moss um, hidden in the different hides on that side. So this is a moist side. And this side is kept a lot drier. It's not dry by any means, but it's definitely kept drier. Uh, so yeah, that is the um, outside of the enclosure, so you can have a look at it. I will take you inside it now and show you the animals that are living inside. So the first animal I'm going to show you within the communal tank is my really awesome snails. I have a lot of different colour morphs um, of the Akatina um, Felicia, I think it is. Um, there's Jade and there's some other ones in here. Um, I have the brown shell with the white body, the brown shell with the grey brown body, and I also have the white shell with the white body and the white shell with the brown body. So I have lots of different ones. They're all hiding, they're very good at hiding. Um, there's some underneath the log at the back, sort of in that direction, but here's two, they're just out there already eaten. Um, we always chuck some leaves in here all the time, um, but these actually aren't for all staying in here. Um, I normally only have two snails in my big setup because I don't want them to um, lay too many eggs in here and I also don't want them to overtake the enclosure. So what I normally do is I have them in a different vivarium but we're having a bit of a shift around and the one vivarium that they were in I want to move it um, and put, maybe put something else in it but I'm not putting um, snails in it because it, it lets the moisture out too quickly. So we're going to try and get some sort of rub and put it actually on the kitchen countertop. Um, once we have it on the kitchen countertop then we'll be able to feed them all our leftover bits and pieces and obviously we supplement them then with the extra bits and pieces like the stuff of calcium and extra bit, all that kind of stuff. We also keep in here a big piece of cuttlefish which I don't know if you can actually see that they munch on quite readily. There's lots of um, sections eaten out of it. Um, they absolutely love cuttlefish. They go mad for cuttlefish. Um, I have 
five in here. I think I have five in total now. Um, I have sent some to um, Layla at Scots and Verts and uh, Holly at Princess Sophie King. Um, so if you want to go check out those videos, I'll link them down in the description um, of when they actually received them. Um, I also sent them some homemade um, spiders. So the next um, temporary inhabitants in this enclosure are my stick insects. Here's one here crawling up the stick as you can see. Um, if anybody actually knows what species of stick insect this is, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, I'm not sure of the species. Um, I got it, well my kids got it from a show. Um, I think it was West, the West Nimbert show last year. A wood stick insect or something? But I'm not 100% sure. I also have coming up behind it now um, is my. I'll put the camera down because it seems to stop still. Um, this is my uh, Queensland uh, giant. He's still not very big, he's only big. I um, actually got it at Entercon. I got six of them. Um, five of them disappeared. We have no idea where they went. They weren't in this enclosure, they were in an enclosure on their own. The reason he's in this enclosure is because the others disappeared and I can't understand why. So he's on his own as well, or she, I don't know. Um, so I just have these two in here, um, just living their best life at the minute with this one big sprig of bramble. Like I said, they will be going in their own enclosure. Um, I have a couple of other species of stick insect ready to um, go in. Uh, to an enclosure as well so I'm just waiting for them to grow out a little bit so that's what I'm doing at the moment. The next time I'm going to show you is my sun beetle. Um, I have five of them in here. He is the only one out because they like to sit out when the sun is out um, and I haven't seen them today so it's also quite overcast today so it makes sense. Uh, they're pretty cool some animals. Um, I still have them um, they're not the same ones that were in here because they don't live very long and they, the ones I did originally have in here I only had two or three of them and they were either all male or all female I can't remember but I know they were all the same so they never bred. Literally as I was filming this <laughs> two more have come out from underneath the log so um, yeah there's two more um, and then there's the original one there. Um, I have five in total the other two obviously are was nice of you. Just push the other one off the log. So yeah, that's them. The next animal is a little bit more elusive. They like to hide. Um, I have got a male who likes to be out a lot more. I'll show you him in a second. My Madagascan hisses. Um, I grabbed this one. This one's my big male. Um, he is my biggest male. I grabbed him because otherwise he'll run back into the hole. There's like a cave down in the corner. They go through in here and they can go up behind the log. So uh, they like to hide in there. I have eight of these. I have um, four males, four females. I would like some more females. But yeah, this is my big boy. Um, he is the Doctor Mark II. Because um, our old one used to be called the Doctor, but he died of old age. And this is actually one of his babies. But they're fully grown now. On them. There is another one there on that log. That's his territory. Um, I'm not going to disturb him as well. I don't want to upset him. And just underneath him, I don't know if you can see, there is actually a snail just by there. I think see better underneath. There you go. There is a snail by there. That is one of the yellow ones, I think. No, it's not. It's one of the brown ones. And the final um, invert that's in here, other than the cleanup crew, which I'll show you in a second, is there's two of these, but this one likes to hide under here, so I know where he is. Um, and this is my African train millipede. I have two of these. This one is my larger one, the other one is smaller. Um, I don't think they're fully grown. I've had them for about two years, I think. I don't know, they might be fully grown, I'm not really sure. I had them since they were tiny babies. Um, and I've sold them as uh, train millipedes. Um, I've sold them as train millipedes, so they're pretty cool. Um, he's quite handleable, he's quite friendly, he likes. He doesn't mind being picked up. Like, I'm not going to say he likes it because I don't know, but... Um, he doesn't mind, he will come out and he will wander around. The other one, however, will not. It'll just curl up in a ball and just stay there. Are you going to, like, walk off my finger? Okay, 
I was trying to get him off, but now he's stuck, so... Yeah, this could take a while. which is um, quite a large enclosure at 45 um, deep by uh, 60 um, tall and 90 wide um, so it's quite a large enclosure there is um, a good few animals in here um, the most uh, prevalent one in here is probably the um, isopods and the sprint tails uh, which uh, the whole way throughout here so that they can be the clean up through which they're doing an amazing job of um, the leaf litter hides them pretty well, but they are under here. Okay, so these are just your common garden wood lice um, from the UK. Um, oh, I dropped them. But they are um, really, really doing well in here. Um, they breed really, really well. There's a lot of them, but they are doing an amazing job. And I always um, take some out and I have a, like a box especially for them um, so that they don't overtake the entire enclosure. Um, the reason I have the UK garden ones is because I honestly at the time didn't know that there was such thing as other um, isopods, which sounds a bit funny, but um, obviously now I know, but I've already got them in here and they, they're doing really well, so I, I'm not prepared to change them in. Um, however, I didn't just chuck the um, outside ones in here, I did quarantine them, um, I had an entire I had an entire culture of them for well over a year before I actually put them in um, purely on the fact that I actually wanted to keep wood lice which I thought was really cool um, and that is what I ended up doing was putting them in this enclosure when I made it so I've had my inverts now for about five years in total I've had this enclosure for about four so the only other thing that's in here that will be staying in here which is a bit of a weird one um, is this snail and um, we don't know how he got in here he may have come in on a piece of bramble at some point a long time ago um, and got into this enclosure when or on a piece of lettuce or something we're not sure but it's actually a common garden snail um, and he has been living in here since it began so I'm not prepared to leave, make him move out um, and he's doing really well he's doing absolutely amazing here is my snails again and um, there is actually a link in there is a link here in the corner and um, where you can actually go and have a look at when I actually got these snails and um, I got them from my cousin Catherine who is also a really good supporter for the channel so guys a few things I just want to point out before I move to the end of the video um, make sure your substrate is very very deep I know some of you will want to do this communal setup and that is the first thing I'm going to say to you is to make sure you have deep substrate you're gonna need at least one and a half times the depth of your millipedes length um, just to make sure they have the space to molt um, if you have a little bit less I don't think it really makes too much of a difference but you've got to try to aim for that that's your sort of goal you're going to want um, the next sort of thing I'm going to suggest is to have um, like I said a more humid side and a drier side it doesn't have to be dry it just needs to be drier than the humid side um, it gives them a lot more option of where to live um, and it helps the different types of animals to stay separated so they don't irritate each other. Um, the final thing is my stick insects are coming out of there because I prefer to keep animals from the same um, environment and the same continent. So a lot of the animals in that enclosure, most of them, are actually from Africa um, or Madagascar um, and it's usually from the sort of um, jungly areas. So. Um, like you know anywhere where it's humid there's leaf litter that kind of thing that's where they like to live so that's what I've tried to stick to and the thing I've tried to recreate um, there is also um, different communals you can set up that one is my African one I actually have other communals as well and um, there's not as much in them so that's why it's not as interesting and I haven't set them up as well but I'm going to be doing a lot more um, different communal setups including um, one that I have been starting which is going to be my UK setup. 
So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like this video if you did like it. That would really help the channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more like this or you want to see more updates on the communal setup. Um, that would be absolutely amazing. So check out the links, guys. Here is my communal setup the last time I spoke about it, way before it got put into this enclosure. And here is my um, time I got my snails off my cousin Catherine, so go check that out as well. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you all again in the next video. Bye!